Hey guys, alright, sorry for making you jump around videos, but we're right back to where we, um, we picked off from last time. So we haven't made our plot yet, but we passed all of these data types to MATLAB, and now we're going to work with these things right here. So, now I have it. Now I have all my variables in MATLAB, and now is where things get a little bit interesting. So I have these two right here, and these do the entire plot. So let's take a look at the first one. Now I need this called engine evaluate string engine eval string then i need the pointer to engine and then i need this string right here this quote of string so what this basically does it's telling it matlab evaluate the string that's going to be passed so you then you need the pointer to the engine so it knows what engine it's, it's going through then it takes this entire string right here and it passes it to MATLAB. So basically everything inside these quotes needs to be in MATLAB speak. It has to be in MATLAB syntax, okay? So what I have right here is I'm defining a figure, figure, and this is in MATLAB speak, unit normalized. I'm basically just making a figure the size of my screen, okay? And then, so here's the next one. So I have another edge of owl string. Every time you need to send a command for MATLAB to do, to actually plot or to work with data, you need to use edge of owl string. Then now it's going to be plot. So this calls the MATLAB plot function, which is just extremely simple. We'll take a data type and just plot it in a simple plot, make a line graph. So then right here, these right here, what I have highlighted right here, this is an XY double, like a pair, and this is an XY pair. So we'll check out the first XY pair. The first X um, values are going to be the degrees array that I passed. So that means the X values are going to be the degrees. And the y values are going to be the sign, the sign values of those degrees. So it's going to be sign versus degrees, and I'm going to have it color red. This is just MATLAB speak. It passes a color code for red. Then this is the next xy pair, and it's going to be cosine values plotted against degrees, color blue. Then this is just more MATLAB speak. I just adding a, a, a minor grid and a title. And now we're done. This just pauses it so I can look at it when I'm done. So we'll go ahead and see how this works. So now we're pa once again we pass three arrays. One is the degrees, one is the cosine values, one is the sine values to MATLAB. And using this, we are plotting those values. And we'll see how it turns out. So I need to do example one. And here we go. Look at this. Here are our sine values in red. And here are our cosine values in blue. Now, as you can see right here at 180 degrees, cosine is at zero, as, or I mean, it's at negative one as it should be. And if we go up to the sine values, the sine value is right here at zero. So this is a sine and cosine graph plotted over each other, which I find definitely pretty neat. So as you can see, if we try to do this in C++, I mean, defining the figure and defining the axes and defining all the, you know, all the spaces and all the values in C++, it would be quite complicated. I do not know how to do it. But using MATLAB, when we want to do our visualizations, we can get really cool visualizations without using too much code. So here we go. Now we're going to go on to one more example. So as I said before, if you're going to be passing an array of values, you need to use this format right here. There's another cool thing that you can do with MATLAB though, and that is you can pass individual values through in a through a loop, through a for through a C loop, and those values, if you make those values change through the loop, then you will have effectively created an animation. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So right now we have a different syntax. And this syntax is going to be right here. And we use this if we're just passing individual values, scalar values. So basically, if we're passing one dimensional arrays of length one, then we use this syntax. So here we go. So I'm going to be making a pointer to type MX array. I'm going to be calling the pointer dynamic sign D sign. And what this basically is, is it's going to hold an individual sign value, which is why I call it dynamic. And it's going to be changing throughout each iteration of the loop. So I'm going to set this equal to MX create double matrix. Then the size, it's going to be, it's going to be a one dimensional array of length one. In other words, a scalar value. And then I need this MX real right here. So I do that for sine, cosine, and degrees. And then now this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. As we said earlier, this value right here points to type MX array. So we can't just set this equal to a double value, you know, like a, an integer value or a double value, because it's pointing at type MX array. But what we can do is we can declare a pointer of type double and set it equal to the pointer for this, right? So MX get pointer D sign. So what I'm basically saying is I'm making a pointer of type double, a pointer to double called P sign. And this is going to be a pointer for this pointer that points to MX array. 
So what this basically does is I can work with this pointer right here and whatever I set this equal to, it will get passed to my MATLAB type of MX array, right? So you'll see that right here, like right here, I have the, the pointer P sign is equal to this value, which is a double value. When I do that, this points to a double value and this points to this basically. So the value will get stored in D sign up here. It goes from here to here, to here, to here. And then from there we can send it to MATLAB. So I do the same, I do D sign, D cosine, D degrees, and I, I initialize doubles for them. So for the my pointer to cosine, I have MX get pointer, D cosine. Now here's my loop. And as you notice, all the plot commands are inside of the loop. And that is because they're gonna be changing with each iteration of the loop. So right now, I have a D reference pointer, which means that I'm not pointing to the address, I'm pointing to the value held inside of this, of the right hand value. So I'm saying D reference, P sign is equal to, it points to the value of sign array III. So let's go through this, let's run through the loop. III is equal to zero. So let's go, P sign points to the value of sign array zero. So sign array zero value is the sign of zero, which is zero. So P sign will point to the value of zero. Since P sign is a pointer for D sign, then D sign will point to the value zero. And effectively we will, and then we'll be basically passing the value zero to MATLAB. Okay, so then let's say it's II is equal to 360. Then we know that P sign will point to the value of sine array 360, which is equal to sine of 360. Sine of 360 is zero, so P sign will point to zero and that'll get passed to D sign, which gets passed to MATLAB. So therefore we're putting the value zero in MATLAB. So that's what I have right here. D reference pointers and these get the values, the single values, right? So I'm not, point, I'm not pointing to the entire array, I'm pointing to a single index in the array. And then I have the eng put variable again. So basically it's really important that you have the eng put variable and your D reference pointer uh, assignment inside of the loop because they're gonna be changing with each iteration of the loop, right? So P sign points to zero and then I'm putting zero in, right? P sign points to zero, so then I'm putting the value in MATLAB and then I'm working with the value. Then it's gonna to go to the next loop, I is gonna be equal to one. P sign is gonna be equal to like 0 .001 and then I'm gonna put 0 .001 in MATLAB and then work with that value. Okay, so do the eng put variable. Once again, I'm just putting this value right here, my MX array into MATLAB under the alias D sign. I'm doing the same thing with my D cosine value and my D degree value. I'm putting them in MATLAB under these aliases. And then I'm going to be calling this right here. So eng eval string. So I'm making a scatter plot of the sine values versus the degrees and the cosine values versus the degrees. Okay, and then the rest of this is just MATLAB speak. It just tells the axes and the size of the scatter ball and everything like that. So you probably need to watch that one more time, but just remember these, this is the format you want to use if you're passing individual values to MATLAB and if you're using a loop to create a simulation. If you're going to be passing an array of values, you want to use this format. So I'll go ahead and show you our, our animation. Go ahead and play it, and we're going to do example two, and here we go. Here's our dynamic trigonometric function graph. So as we can see, the blue one is the cosine, it's tracing a cosine curve. The red one is a sine, and it's tracing a sine curve. And as you can see, this is a pretty neat little simulation. It's very fluid, but the, the really the point here is that it's so simplified using MATLAB. You know, I mean, we use like 50 lines of code total to send all the data and do the whole for loop and everything like that, and then just two lines of code to actually plot all of this. And if this if we were defining this all in C++, I mean, we'd have to define the whole figure window. We'd have to define the axes, the color of everything, where all these little notch marks are, the radius of the balls, and where how to color the pixels. And it was just it would be so much more complicated than than. Um, than the way that we're doing right now. So you can take this, and th this is a very simple example, but I mean, you, you can just pass so much data to MATLAB. You can make this basically as complicated as you want. You could have 100 objects here moving and just keep on passing frames like that. So it's really up to you. You know, now that now now that you know this, the world of MATLAB is basically open to you guys. So just go out and just practice it. Just remember these formats. And so I just have one more thing to show you guys. And that is a more complicated example of what, uh, of the tools that I just showed you. And so basically, let me make this really quick. This is a spring and mass simulator, and it uses the exact same techniques and tools with MATLAB and C++ that I just showed you guys. So let me show you this. I'm just entering in some initial conditions right now. 
Okay, so now I'm going to do this one. This is a simulation. Um, let's see, 20, 100, and well, you'll see. So here we go. So here's the spring and mass system plotted as it goes through time. And here's the net force on the object. And as you can see, I mean, this is a lot more complicated than the examples that we just went over. But the example, but you know, the principle is the exact same. You know, the same way that I'm plotting the end of this the, this object right here, this purple object, is the exact same way that I just plotted those sine graphs. I mean, I didn't use just a sine curve to make this. I used estimations using kinematics to actually, you know, simulate the whole system. But using the scatter plot and passing the values is the exact same way that I just showed you guys. And then, you know, as you get more uh, more into it, you can learn how to do this arrow function, how, how to define all the grids and the titles and the axes limits and everything like that so I have two more quick simulations to show you this one shows the acceleration versus time on top the velocity versus time on bottom and the position versus time on right on the right so as you can see these are all related they're all sine they're all sine and cosine graphs they're all trigonometric graphs okay and this is the last one and by far my favorite and it does an energy analysis on the ball as it goes through time. So it, it's everything's lagging right now because of my video player. Normally the frames per second would be probably like 150% this or like, you know, uh, a lot better than this. But I have the net energy right here, the kinetic energy right here, the gravitational potential energy of the object right here, and the spring potential energy of the object of the object and mass or end spring system right here. So that's basically my video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped you. I know that when I first got MATLAB, um, I had a hell of a time trying to get it hooked up to C++, but I hope this video helped you do that, and I hope that you go and explore the world of MATLAB and the possibilities with plotting. Um, check back for more videos on MATLAB and C++ in the future. Take care.